please join me in welcoming Clemens and Andreas to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon all together. I'm very proud uh, that Andreas today is with me on stage and we would like to show you uh, a project or more a little bit uh, a journey that we uh, had together the last two or three years. Um, just to give you a short overview, we just wanted to show you a little bit uh, an overview about the airport of Vienna, what the facts are behind it, what, is the, what are the challenges at the moment and how digitalization is driven there and why it's so interesting to talk about indoor navigation and augmented reality and then I'd like to give you some insights on the project where we are standing and as far as we see a worldwide unique project where we are close to finish uh, our first part of the journey. May I hand over to you Andreas? Thank you. Good afternoon. I'll try to give you a few facts about Vienna Airport, um, who we are, what motivates us, a um, few facts. Uh, in 2015, we handled 22.5 million passengers. We have three terminals, five gate areas, and there are about 70 shops and 30 restaurants and cafes at the airport. And on site, there are 20,000 employees in about 260 companies. Um, years ago, we started at Vienna Airport using Wi-Fi for our handling processes on the apron. And when doing this, we considered also the passengers. So we offered free Wi-Fi since 2004. And it's accessible with a simple click. You don't have to fill, um, fill in registration forms or such things. The passengers love it, and we praised worldwide, therefore. We have two internet connections with a three gigabyte per seconds, and there are currently approximately 30,000 users at the Wi-Fi per day, per day. And on peak, at peaks, there are 5,000 users simultaneously. The percentage of the mobile devices actually is more than 84%. Three years ago, as we started, uh, the percentage was, uh, I think, 49, 48%. The service for the passenger was only, always, has been, always been very important for us. And we put in really, be, really much effort in this topic in the last years. The passengers appreciate the efforts and we was awarded with a Best Staff Airport Award two years in a row, 2015 and 2016. And also, and was also awarded 2016 with a four-star designation in Europe, there are 220 airports. Um, among them, only 10 have a five-star rating, a four-star rating, and only one a five-star rating. Um, to hold this level on service, we started 2014 with an initiative at the airport. It's called the Service World Cup. And different delegates from different departments all over the airport meet together every two weeks. Um, in these meetings, we discuss and gather ideas. Um, we, and we also document the progress and the implementation at the airport. The categories in the Service World Cup are different. It's ambient at the airport, at the, airport the designing of waiting areas, also uh, feedback opportunities in the restrooms, and also the AR project we are talking about is in the Service World Cup. The service, a very important service topic, is wayfinding and orientation at the airports. And we don't have to think too complicated about this topic because we are all on the move and we are all mobile. Um, it's very important for us to bring the passengers from point E to point B, and also 
for us today when we started at point A and the things running good, uh, we know and we have to know where we should go. It's easy, we have a good feeling and when things aren't, we have a bad feeling when we don't know where we have to go. Um, the users need the information about their flight and also where they have to go. Um, in the last years it was easier because a few years ago it was easier because it was enough to offer a printed map or an info kiosk. But now there are more and more passengers. At peak days in 2015 there were 80,000 passengers per day at Vienna airport, everyone with his own device. So our dream was a navigation for each personal device uh, since 2009. We tested a lot of different systems. Always, uh, all systems promise the same. We need no much more hardware at the airport. But the reality shows the difference. Um, because there are the Wi-Fi hotspots aren't set uh, in this order to get perfect orientation at the airport. And there are also um, the different levels in the buildings are, are connected across vast airspaces. We can see it on the picture, maybe here at this air side level, there are three levels. And next picture, there are four levels um, connected across the air, vast airspace. It's always the same with the tests. Um, the, Result is we need more hardware and much more beacons, more hotspots. Um, it was Clemens who approached us uh, 2013 with his new, or with his augmented reality project. And this was two years after we met us in Berlin at a marketing conference. He wants to test the project at the, Technical Un at the University of Technology in Vienna or maybe at the airport. I agreed and we tested it on the airport. The result was very good. Our IT department was excited. No, no more hardware was needed and it works well. In other departments of the airport, the enthusiasm was not so great because the topic augmented reality was not so familiar for the most of my colleagues. But um, I set it up as a service VM, service World Cup project. And so we started an implementation with a, in a defined area at the airport. And yeah. Clemens will tell you what we're doing exactly. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. And I mean, as Andreas said, thanks to him, we not only had a venue where we could test our technology, because I mean, you can test it in your own office and see how it works. But I mean, actually at an airport with 22 million people over the year, I mean, it's really great to test something in a live situation. At the end, it not only was a demo, but we are really in a prototype, which is more or less a live implementation where we are working on right now. But just to give you a few insights, um, Andreas already said the complexity that we had at the beginning, having beacons or Wi-Fi router was always a, quite a pain. Got a lot of clients testing Google or Apple Indoor Navigation. The problem is always you need a Wi-Fi slam if you change your router, it's not working properly. If you got a special venue like the airport of Vienna where you have high ceilings and different floors which are integrated into one big hall and it's not working properly and at the end you have to do a fingerprinting or something similar and what you get at the end is a blue dot uh, on a map. So what we said or what we promised to Andreas is that you don't need any hardware anymore because, please correct me if I'm wrong, just implementing beacons at the airport of Vienna, you would need around two people which are just maintaining the beacon. So it's not about only having hardware and having an airport which is continuously changing. So you always have to replace beacons, add them, scan them new, so it's always changing the structure. So we said it's an easy process to implement. We'll show you on the next slide. Um, we don't only want to show your direction because that's what we've seen in the tests as well, that a lot of people using a map or running in one direction then think, oh, the blue dot is running in the wrong direction, have to turn around and go the other way. 
And at the end, it's not only about indoor navigation, what we've seen through the last month and years that we traveled together through this journey, but it's really more about having an experience, and that's why we're happy that we're in that uh, Customer Satisfaction World Cup, that we really can also have a different uh, experience for the client going through the airport. And even there, so on top, having a personalized journey. The process itself, in general, uh, was rather easy. At the beginning when we started, we took a, I tell you afterwards why I said at the beginning, we took a smartphone. Uh, we've shown that slide also in, in the US, something changed that you'll see afterwards, but we scan a building. What we get out of the building is we're getting a point cloud, which in general is a slam a lot of people are using. Uh, for, for smaller purposes, you take your recognition files, put it on the 2D map where you have your room that you just scanned, and all the rooms will be registered to each other so that you know, for instance, when you're in that room and you'd like to go, for instance, to the restrooms, you have to go straight and then to the right. So this looked pretty, pretty easy, and in 2014, we made the test and said, great, let's go for it, we can go live in 2015. This is not the honest, the honest part where we are standing right now, because I guess that's very important what we've seen also with all the things that are changing in, in the AR field. Sometimes you think something is working and then somebody gets bored and then you get a big problem, I guess, like we had it the last month, or he knows that very well, I guess. So, like a lot of uh, from uh, us in the room had a problem when Mateo was bought. We worked together with another tech company which was bought by Facebook uh, more than two years ago. At the beginning, we said we are going right into it. We take the technology of that company and we just put our services, wrap it around, and then we go live. and. Airport of Vienna can go live uh, at the beginning of 2015. As mentioned, they got bought. We had to look for a research partner, and we had to start again from scratch. So that's a nice uh, setback when you're a startup and you're about to see the finish line, and then you are one kilometer behind. But however, the last uh, two years have been challenging, but also very joyful, because we managed it to do everything from scratch on our own, develop an algorithm, develop the SLAM, restructure the whole process, how it can work, that you can scan a building, restructure everything, put it on a map, and then make it recognizable. And that was quite a long way. It was quite a delay in the project. Um, but what we are, want to show you now is that we already got the new scanning process, all the things are in place, and we are now about to finalize the project at the airport of Vienna. But we can show you a demo video that we have done uh, at the beginning, how it will look like. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, the first demo that we made, we said it's great, you just take a smartphone, you go through a building, scan it, and then uh, you, you just uh, put it in our backend and uh, we can recognize the whole building. What we've seen is on the test at the airport of Vienna, if you take just a smartphone, it takes really a hell of, of time <laughs> to, to scan a whole airport. So what we've done is we changed the process, as you can see our colleague Christian here, uh, and we are now using just a digital camera. You can run through the, uh, through the airport right now. Uh, since it's got a fisheye lens, we got 180 degrees, so we are just running in one circle, and within a few hours, you really can scan the whole terminal. That, that's, that's the great thing what we now achieved the last, uh, the last months. What I would like to show you in that video is then also that you can see how the algorithm works, that we can position someone. So that means when you are using our technology, uh, the things that we just before recorded the point clouds now are used in the application to position you where you are right now. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit small, but you can see there on the map in Terminal 3 a small blue dot and an arrow showing you where you're looking at. So what we're doing and what the server is doing is in general, when you start the, the application, it first takes the first picture, sends it to the server, the server positions you, knows where you are looking at, and then our SLAM algorithm is starting a new process uh, so that it knows where you're walking without permanently syncing with the server. So the data uh, transfer rate is very low, and the accuracy is very high, as you can see here. And the good thing is, since we have initial position, and then the mobile phone is starting a new track and only syncing every 15 to 30 seconds. It doesn't matter if it's Eastern or Christmas time, for instance, and the venue is changing a little bit because you're starting your own track and we just need the sync just to be sure that you're on the right track. What we're working on right now to scan even faster is also that we not only can use a 360 degree camera, but also uh, 180, but also 360, then you don't have to go in circle, but you just can go straight and scan a whole building. 
So what we then said is, based on the first test that we made at, at, at the airport, we said, okay, everybody has seen the test already. People liked it, but not 100% convinced because it was just 150 meters. What do we have to do to get our first demo client as the first full client? And we sat together and said, okay, what really would be important is to have a full user journey from a client going to the airport. So it says, you are parking your car, you have to navigate, and then there's also a lot of offers and excitement around it. I guess I just have to speed up a little bit. So as you can see here, the parking space is a little bit outside of the airport. You are in the parking, uh, parking space, you go out, and then you are outside and you are going into the terminal on the other side. Already there we have some AR features just to make it a little bit more playful. So we are using GPS and AR that we can recognize um, the different business buildings which are in front of the airport. And when you're looking there, it's synchronized with the free rental space and you automatically can see, hey, look, there are seven offices free. If you're interested and you want to work at the, at the airport, there's enough uh, free space there. When you're starting the application and you tell us, okay, what's, the, what's your flight number, then we know, okay, how fast, it, how far it is for you to walk. We have developed our own AR engine, which works together with the technology. Because the good thing is then when you start to walk, we know how quick you are walking and depending on this, the time really will be adapted to your own speed and not just the wayfinding sign telling you it's 10 minutes. Maybe when you're fast walking, it's seven minutes. When you're in a wheelchair, maybe it's 15 minutes. So we can adapt this uh, to your needs as well. We start the user journey by scanning your parking lot. We know where you parked your car and will be saved automatically as a reminder. <laughs> the menu at the beginning for that pilot you'll be able to go to the check-in, to your personal gate, to the launches, and you can even say, I'm going to the gate, and in between, you are, you are going to the, to the launches that we can reroute you. Then we have, when you're going check-in, security area, and the first terminals, there's the duty-free in the middle, where we have a lot of 2D content and 3D content, because the nice thing is, as you'll see it later, that we can directly attach offers directly on the duty-free, but also have new advertising space. And I guess what always was a pain with other technologies is that you also can then go to the higher level where the non-Schengen area is, go through the passport, and then finally go to your gate. The cool thing behind the, uh, behind the navigation itself is that we also can recognize, of course, where you're looking at exactly and then place the information that's relevant for you. Because at the moment, the airport is having a lot of offers and having a lot of shops but no one really knows then where which offer fits to which shop. With our technology, you are navigating through a venue, you are looking at the duty free and you directly can see, ah, oh, look, there's a new perfume, minus 20%. You just click on it, you get a passbook uh, voucher, and you can use it right away because you know you are standing in front there. So very intuitive. And another thing that we're going to implement, I'm sorry, that's now um, a picture of one of our other clients, uh, Heathrow Airport, is also that we know, for instance, you are Russian or you are Chinese, you're looking at the wayfinding sign, we know your smartphone is set to Chinese, so automatically the wayfinding signs also will be uh, in Chinese. So it's a very personal journey. And the added value on top is that at the airport there's a lot of free area, but it's not allowed to be used for marketing purposes because it's emergency exit or uh, some other reason why you're not allowed to use it. With the technology with augmented reality, of course, you can also play a, a place AR content, like a car, a beach, whatever you like. So a lot of new possibilities that you have uh, when walking through the airport. And at the end, I would like to show you uh, the actual demo with what we started. And hopefully next time we are here or when we are in June in Santa Clara, we can show you the final pilot, which we are going to implement now uh, by the beginning of next year in January with the full pilot. That was the demo that we've done in May, as mentioned. The nice thing, as you can see here, is that even when people are walking through, it's still extremely stable, because when you're looking into the venue, it's around 1,000 to 2,000 features that you can recognize, and you only need around 10 to 15% of the features that we are still having a stable uh, recognition, because every point has X, Y, Z coordinates only, so very little data and descriptions to each other. And cool thing is so that even in Russia, where we tested it already on a Friday afternoon, holiday season was started and we had a presentation to show it to someone. It was quite sweaty for me, but still worked out very well and that's what I like very much. And that's, as you can see, AR content directly. You're looking at the restaurant, you're speaking English, you'd like to see the daily menu, you just tap on it, you see the daily menu in your language and you don't have to stand in front of a 
small uh, menu. And I guess uh, the, the cool thing is really that you actually really know also where, where you have to walk to. And then quickly come to your gate. And depending on the data uh, protection that we have in each country, the cool thing is that when you are accepting, accepting, we also know exactly where you are. And over an API, we can send your position to the airline, for instance, and they know oh, you're just around the corner and they're not closing the flight, for instance, and they're still uh, waiting for you. Or like here, you have a car in 3D, in AR. You'd like to sit into the car, you tap on it on your smartphone. You just can really enjoy advertising in a different new level if you're interested in. Yeah, coming to the end, because I guess we're already a little bit uh, too late. Um, where we're working right now, as mentioned, is we are now finalizing the prototype. Everything's ready so far. Uh, what we already accomplished is that we've seen that even in complicated venues like at the airport of Vienna, the technology is working extremely stable, like we already seen before from the latest tests. And uh, I guess as we've seen from the first feedback, please correct me when I'm wrong, it's just a totally different experience when you exactly know where to go to. It's like a good friend showing you the way you're looking through the video stream and it shows you where to go. And it's just a different experience and a different way through the airport. And I guess there'll be a lot of new things that we can test there, which, which is coming up like a version for children. Instead of arrows, you have a pony running in front of you and stuff like this. So I guess it's a good combination of customer satisfaction that we can achieve and new revenue streams uh, for advertising. Thank you very much. <laughs>